If possible, I would stay in my pajamas all day. It's true. Every day, I wake up, I go to work, eat lunch, go home, eat dinner, watch TV, go to bed, rinse and repeat. I constantly play games on my phone when I'm bored. People's contact information is programmed into my phone so that I don't actually have to remember it. I incessantly check my email, Facebook, and Twitter. Does this sound familiar to anybody? <laughs> yeah, I think it's fairly typical. I think that's pretty normal. Um, so we're going to call this part of me daily routine guy. It's the best thing I could think of, sorry. <laughs> Thanks to the technology, entertainment, and social media industries, we now spend more time with other people's ideas than we do with our own. We're, we're relying on technology to keep us entertained when we're bored, and to remember even the most basic facts for us. For example, how many of you know your grandmother's phone number by heart? It's a few of you. It's good. The rest of you, shame on you. 354-3942, <laughs> that's my grandma. You can call her if you want to later. She's nice. Um, she is nice. She's Japanese, so you'll have to speak Japanese with her. Um, anyway, <laughs> the more time that we spend with other people's ideas, the less time that we spend with our own creative centers. And as, we, as those creative juices get pushed out towards those margins, they become much more difficult to access. And this is problematic for two reasons. One, creativity is important. I think we would all agree to that. Creativity is important. And two, creativity is a skill. And it takes effort to sustain skills. More effort than daily routine guy wants to put in. Right? Fortunately, he's only one part of me. The human mind is incredibly adaptive. I recently read a study out of Harvard Medical School that said that if a, if a human is blindfolded for about 90 minutes, depriving that subject of his sight, his visual cortex will begin to fire through a sense of touch. Literally, you begin to see with your hands. At this point, I'd like to invite up Hannah Toole. Hannah is the founder of TEDxCSU. Without her and her team, we wouldn't be here today. So everybody give a big round of applause to Hannah Toole, please. Now, um, just so everybody understands this, Hannah and I didn't really set anything up. I talked to her before my talk and said, hey, can I borrow you uh, for, for this? We're going to need this. So um, in just a moment, like Blaze said in my introduction, I'm going to ask for you to pull out something from your wallet, your purse, your pocket, whatever you might have, and uh, something that you wouldn't mind us using up here on stage. Okay? Please don't take it out yet. It's important that I don't see it. So with that, we're going to grab this. And Hannah, take a look at these. I want you to make sure that everybody gets to see those. Those are two silver dollars. They are the biggest coins that I could find. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is duct tape. Now take a look, coin goes on the tape, and the tape goes over the eye bulb. That's what my son calls him, he's five. He calls <laughs> no, guys, guys it, it doesn't hurt going on. <laughs> Same thing here, this coin goes on the tape, coin and tape goes over the eyeball. All right, good. Try not to tape the microphone to my face either while I do this. And this one goes, Right like that, and I think I got one more. There it is. There you go. And last uh, Good. Now, Hannah, would you push all that on there for us, please? Go ahead, push it on there. Yeah, make sure the coins keep my eyes from getting gouged out. That's good. And then there's also a blindfold right here. And the blindfold, ladies and gentlemen, is mostly for that guy up in the back who's like, dude, he can still see. <laughs> Good, so at this point, um, please, if you've got something that you wouldn't mind us using here on stage, pull it out, hold it up over your head like this. Hannah is gonna run out and, and get it. And uh, Hannah, when you come back up, just put them right here on the stool for us. 
And now, oh, also, ladies and gentlemen, I am legitimately blindfolded in front of you, so please don't throw anything at me. I will not catch it. And there's an off chance. I just tweeted. <laughs> Hannah, are you back? We got three things? Yes. Awesome. OK, good. Um, now, I want you to pick out one of the things and show it to the audience, make sure that everybody gets, to, gets a good look at it. Have you done that? Yes. Good. You guys, I can't see, OK? So <laughs> I can't tell. <laughs> All right, Hannah, hold, hold that object in your left hand so it's on the opposite side of your body from me. Good, and I'll take your other hand right here. Good, up like this. Good. Now remember, she touched that object with this hand, and the entire body is, is all connected. It's all one big unit. Uh, I saw, she has shoulders. I mean. <laughs> Good, there's a little bit of weight to this. Um, it's not terribly heavy, but there's a little bit of weight to it. And um, it's round. It's not. It's round. It's, it's three-dimensional. It's not like a, like, a, like a driver's license or something like, like a credit card or something. It's, it's definitely got some shape to it. Take a look. Look at it with your eyes. Look at it and focus on the color of it. Orange. <laughs> Wait, is, is it in fact an orange? Yes. Is it? OK, good. Good, good, good. All right, um, put that one back. Let's do another one. Let's do another one. You got one? OK, uh, same thing. Show it to everybody out there. Good, and I'll take your hand again. This one is smaller, less heavy, uh, but there's more pieces to it. There's more pieces to it, and they're they're kind of they're kind of smaller. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, it seems like it's a piece of of jewelry, maybe, like maybe a necklace. Um, I don't know exactly what this is. Uh, is that close? Is that yes. is that close? Is it? Wait, 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 let's see if we can do this. Take a look at the color. Focus on like the main color, if there's more than one color. Uh, there's more than one color. Oh, these are, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. these are earth tones. They're like browns and, and tans and things, is that right? No. All right, I mean, that's fine. Here, put that one down, let's do another one. You told me to make it hard. You did, yeah, I know. Put that one down, make, let's, let's do a different one. I don't know what that is. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, oh you're there? With a new one. With a new one. With a new one. Oh. <laughs> Why'd you skip ahead on me? Is this one a piece of jewelry? Was I not supposed to put it down? No, that's fine. That's fine. That's a, this is a new one? Yeah. Is this one a piece of jewelry? Like, like it's... What is this one? I can't tell. <laughs> it's very close. It's very close? It's, to, I to mean, what? It's not jewelry. It's not jewelry? I don't know what it is. Go back to the last one. <laughs> Go back to the last one. I don't, I don't like that one. She looked, there's a, there's a, I don't know what this is. This is the last one that you had? What, the second one. The second one, yeah, this is, this is number two that, that I missed on. Give me that. Oh. <laughs> Far from earth tones. My humble apologies. This is more like, more bright. Uh, is it something you would wear? Yeah. Like a, yeah. is, we're not at a medical thing. Is this, it's like a stethoscope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of. 
Is it, it, is it, is it, is it like, does it go in your ears? Yes. It goes in your ears. Okay, we're going to call that good enough. <laughs> All right. So, Hannah, um, Make sure you get those things back to the owners after, after my talk. And now comes the part that you guys have all been waiting for. I have to take this off. It's like a band-aid. Where's the microphone? You got the microphone Man. I used to have really bushy eyebrows. <laughs> so allow me to introduce the other half of my personal dichotomy. This is um, maybe my, my uh, alter ego, if you will. For sure, this is Daily Routine Guy's arch nemesis, the magician. In many ways, uh, well, I developed the magician as a persona, as a character for myself, as a performer. And he is an extension of my own natural personality in many ways, but he's also partially fictional. He's not, he's not all powerful like some demigod that can snap his fingers and, and lightning comes shooting out of the sky and all those sorts of things. Rather, he's highly skilled in the areas of sleight of hand and showmanship and psychology. He was blessed with a set of super skills like advanced memory and rapid deduction techniques, sort of like Sherlock Holmes. It's cool, I think. His magic, his magic is engaging, disruptive to our norms, and constantly leaves us audiences astonished. He is interesting, intelligent, charming, incredibly attractive. <laughs> well, maybe not that one, but... In short, the magician is the embodiment of the human potential. I dreamt him up that way. My magic, my arsenal of magic, is a combination of true legitimate skills, like, like mnemonics and, and rapid memory and those sorts of things, and also the deceptionary skills, the sleight of hand and the, the, uh, the classic magic tricks, if you will. So together with those two sets of skills, the true skills and the deceptionaries, along with this personality of a magician, I can walk right up to that line of logic right up to the line of logic, and blur that line out. Blurring the line between fiction and non-fiction, between the possible and the impossible, really. And as an artist, I can step across that line and bring the magician to life. He is a fictional character, really, existing in and interacting in our real world. For me personally, he bridges the gap between my reality and my dreams. I come from an artistic philosophy that says that good art reflects nature. Pushing that one step further, I like to say that good magic reflects the supernatural. Quick word study, supernatural. Super meaning above or better than or superior to, right? Natural meaning natural <laughs> or ordinary, <laughs> right? Supernatural, better than ordinary. Ladies and gentlemen, the supernatural is deeply, deeply rooted in our dreams. Think about it. Throughout history, the supernatural has manifested itself in the forms of legend and lore and mythology of old. More modernly, more currently, Science fiction, comic book heroes. See, these, the, these dreams and the storytelling, and ultimately magic, these are core components of our culture. Magic, by the way, magic is far more than the simple act of, like, fooling you or tricking your senses. Fooling you is, is just a simple prerequisite to the creation of magic. It's a stepstone towards magic. But in and of itself, fooling you is not magic. Magic, real magic, 
speaks to our hopes, our dreams, our aspirations, our goals in life. I have a personal goal of someday actually becoming the magician, fulfilling my human potential, and truly being able to do the things that he appears capable of doing now. You see, we dream because we were intended for something bigger and better, right? But perhaps more important than my own personal goals and struggles and multi-personality disorders <laughs> is the question of why. Why would I dedicate my life to magic, to the pursuit of magic, to the sharing of magic? Why do I think that magic is crucial to our society? Through the creation of magic, through these magical moments, I like to make people ask the question, what exactly are we humans capable of? Where exactly is that blurry line of human potential? Through magic, I like to brush the dust off of people's imaginations, shake them out of those daily ruts, make them circle back towards that creative center that they have, that we all have, and spend a little bit of time with our own ideas again. So my question to you today is, what is your magician capable of? Thank you.